Hi, I'm Andrew Packer, Managing Editor for The Sovereign Individual, Editor of the Credit Crunch Short Report, and The Sovereign Society's overall researcher. I'm enjoying the uh, last few days of May here in sunny South Florida, a uh, lovely day out by the water, and I can't help but think about uh, what a crazy month it's been for me. Now, it started off around 7 a.m. on Saturday morning, May 1st, when I woke up in uh, Omaha, Nebraska and went to the Berkshire Hathaway annual meeting. I had a great time. I got to meet with some other writers, some uh, fellow value investors, and listen uh, to six hours of Q&A from Warren Buffett and his partner, Charlie Munger. Uh, it was a great time, pretty illuminating. Uh, you know, have one or two problems, like their investment in Goldman, but who doesn't, right? After that, uh, I got to travel again this month, going to Montreal, Canada, for the Sovereign Society's annual Total Wealth Symposium, uh, where I got to meet many of you, uh, Freedom Alliance members, uh, and talk with you uh, both about uh, stock selection on the long side and um, you know what I look for sort of on the short side. But uh, let's focus a little bit sort of on those, uh, those long side ideas, because that's kind of where most of the value is derived from. Now, as a member of the Freedom Alliance, uh, you're not just going to be stuck with, with one type of, of stock investment. It's not just going to be tech or some focus on one thing like that. We're looking for the ability to generate total returns, uh, the ability to always make money no matter what markets do. And let's face it, the stock market's going to have up years and it's going to have down years. And as long as we're positioned correctly, we should be able to continually make real gains year after year. So let's talk about uh, something that's worked very well for the Sovereign Society uh, since the inception and more so this decade, gold. Now what happened? Well, 10 years ago, gold was almost a dirty word in investment. It was a four-letter word. Nobody loved it. The Bank of England was selling off its gold holdings. It got down to 250 an ounce. But what, what has happened since then? Well, governments around the world have been running the printing press full tilt. Uh, real wealth, real things like that. It should hold up well during periods of inflation. Gold's no exception. It's already uh, hitting close to 1,200 again today, as I talk to you, uh, showing uh, pretty hefty gains. And since we originally recommended gold for our uh, subscribers of the sovereign individual, it's up nearly uh, between three and four fold. We also have huge exposure uh, to gold mining companies, especially low cost producers like Gold Corp and Barrick Gold. Uh, which are, of course, able to generate even higher profit margins uh, than gold itself as the price continues to rise. These are fantastic investments, not just because they give you liquidity relative to owning physical gold, but because they give you that sort of leverage to the price of physical gold. And this isn't the kind of leverage that would get you in trouble with uh, collateralized housing debt or things like that. It's just the ability to play off a rising trend, which we're doing and even at these prices, feel like gold still has a long way to go, probably double or more, uh, as governments everywhere continue to just you know, shovel debt down the world. Stop for a sec and take a dollar bill out of your wallet and take a look at what it says on there. It says this note is legal tender. Well, what the hell's a note? Well, a note is just a form of debt. There's nothing backing that up. And as long as government keeps printing more of those or keeps printing debt for more of those that it has to repay at some point or issue even more debt to pay for, it's going to become, you know, considerably worth less, especially compared to the fixed amount of finite real goods, of which gold is one of them. And so is something like silver. Now, of course, as a Freedom Alliance member, you'll also get advantages uh, in terms of other asset classes. For TSI, for example, we like to take a look at uh, investments all over the board. One of those is currencies. And there's really two ways to play currencies. One is to get into uh, spot trading, which involves a lot of leverage. And we really don't do that in TSI. Uh, we focus more just on funds, passive ways to play and continually gain as the dollar continues to weaken and stronger currencies continue to strengthen. It's a fantastic way to get into this sort of alternative asset class uh, and enjoy returns that in theory, should not correlate to the stock market, and uh, for the most part, don't always. So it's a great, great different way to look at that. Furthermore, um, looking ahead, uh, we can also see some sort of uh, market pullback at this point. Let's face it, stocks have rallied hard and fast since March of 2009, and because we're about total returns with the TSI portfolio and with the Freedom Alliance, uh, one of the big ideas out there, obviously, is you know what do you do after a big run-up? Well, if you look for strategic ways to short, um, you should do pretty well. For example, last year I put out a paired trade 
uh, to go long on deeply undervalued natural gas and a short oil. Well, natural gas ended up getting cheaper and that got stopped out. But oil, however, uh, thanks to a major decline in the month of May, is showing a gain on the short side. So we're pretty happy with how that's worked out. And a lot of our chaos portfolio positions obviously are using shorting techniques as well because shorting is pretty much the opposite of the market. So if you expect the market to fall, the TSI chaos portfolio uh, will start to book some huge gains which will offset whatever decline there may be. So as a Freedom Alliance member, obviously, you not only have the option of and need to protect yourself in other countries and offshore, but let's face it, the best way to uh, protect your wealth is to continue to grow it. And looking at other countries and the investment opportunities there is going to be a major idea going ahead in the next few years. Uh, hopefully on a pullback so that we can buy some quality global growth companies on the cheap. So for the Sovereign Society, I'm Andrew Packer.